My smoking hot wife Kay came up with the brilliant idea that we do something that we have never done in almost 30 years of marriage. We took a two week road trip where we drove from Seattle down to Las Vegas to visit my mom. We stopped in Wells, Nevada, spent a night, spent a night there, hard driving down to Las Vegas, got there, spent a couple days visiting my 95-year-old mom. Then we went from there to Encinitas, California, where we spent a couple of days with our, you know, above average, beautiful daughter uh, who you know, working at Callaway, living the dream, and I uh, had a great time down there. And then we took our time, drove up the coast, the California coast, taking the coast highway, uh, where we where we took several days to drive back, uh, drive up that way, get the scenery, and then ultimately get home uh, yesterday. So in 14 days, we we drove 3,206.3 miles, and when I got back. I was thinking about not just the beautiful scenery, not just the incredible uh, country that we live in, uh, America. You know, you got, I, I tell you what, America is so diverse, it's so huge, it's so awesome. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, because the beauty of America is is staggering sometimes, uh, the, the, what we have out there. And I, uh, I'm, I'm an American, I love America. Uh, and. Uh, and, I, you know, if you're not from the U.S., that's cool. I hope you love your country, too. Uh, you know, we all have we all have problems, but uh, for the most part, uh, I wouldn't trade this for, for anything. But you know what? You know, being a business person, being a marketing gunslinger, I can't help but, you know, being on a road trip like this where, uh, where we are staying in motels. Uh, I mean, did I, did I forget to tell you that, you know, we took our dog with us? So we had to find motels where uh, we could keep our dog, and restaurants where we could take our dog. And you know what? When you when you've never done that before, you don't you don't realize that this is sometimes is a little, a little difficult thing. Now, uh, now the but the thing about it that made this for an interesting marketing and uh, business lesson so to speak, about separating yourself from the crowd, even possibly making yourself a little bit uncopyable, was I, I, I had one really great consistent lesson come, you know, hitting me over and over and over again with all the different businesses that we stopped. And so, for example, like when we drove to, we drove to, you know, hard driving, uh, you know, uh, 744 miles, something like that, to spent the night in little tiny wells, uh, Nevada our, fir our first night we stayed in a Motel 6 you know which was not expensive at all right I'm not even sure if it was 50 bucks uh, but it was, probably, it was probably like $69 or something like that you know and uh, and and I didn't notice it at that time but I realized it later on the 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 lesson that we should all learn started there and then and and the lesson was reinforced again when we got to Las Vegas because we stayed at the La Quinta Inn in on Paradise which was off the strip again looking for a place to stay with our dog they hammered home the big thing that we should remember as businesses you know I I went into a small uh, restaurant in Las Vegas called Tacos and Beer. That was the name of the restaurant. Great little restaurant. Great food. Uh, you know, up, upscale tacos. Just tremendous. But they hammered home the uh, uh, the same message. But then, you know, and and a few other places, you know, along the way, did that too. Some did better than others. Some didn't do so well. Then we got to a place. Then we got to the Shiloh Inn in Seaside, Oregon, and at that place. They fell down. They failed to do this one thing, and it really, really uh, impacted the experience negatively. So, what was this thing that everybody did that was so great, and that the Shiloh Inn fell down and didn't, and it, it didn't work? And so, because of them, I'm telling everybody, don't go to the Shiloh Inn in Seaside, Oregon. Well, it was it, it was pretty darn simple, and that was that at all the other businesses that we stopped in, whether it was a hotel, whether it was a restaurant, or even other, other types of small businesses around. If they acted like they were genuinely happy 
to see us, that they were genuinely appreciative of the business we were giving them, and they were eager to please. Now, this, I'm not just talking about customer service. I'm not talking about doing a good job in customer service. I'm talking about the attitude of a grateful attitude, an appreciative attitude, where we felt like we were important. To them, and uh, you know, and they they worked very hard, and they even they even verbalized it. You know, they, they you know we were in the, uh, the, a small quality inn in Encinitas, California, where we could have our dog, right? Uh, but when we checked in, the small safe that they had in there for our valuables didn't work. So we contacted them. It was a Sunday, and I thought, oh, they're probably going to say, oh, the guy's not here who can fix this. We'll be able to fix it tomorrow. And you know what? That was what my expectation was. But they said, no, we'll take care of it right now. And within 10 minutes, that safe was fixed. And they, they and over and over again, they apologized for the for the inconvenience. And the, and the guy said, you know, we really appreciate that you are staying here at, at our motel. And so that appreciation is is a is more than good customer service it's just the, the the attitude of appreciation so here's my question for you if you're in if you're in business do you regularly tell your customers your clients how appreciate uh, appreciative you are of the business that they are sharing with you and when you do have to do some type of customer service for them do you not just do it uh, you know, effectively, maybe even go above uh, above and beyond a little bit. But at the same time, do you acknowledge that there might be an inconvenience for them, and that you are sorry for that inconvenience, and that you w and, and and you are uh, uh, again so appreciative of the business that they are giving you, and that you really, really appreciate uh, um, that they are giving you that opportunity to do business. See, think about this. This 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 is one of the best things that you can possibly do. Be thankful show thanks to your customers to your uh, clients for doing business with you that's really really huge and it, and I find it very interesting that uh, over 3206.3 miles that Kay and I drove over the last 14 days uh, how there were there were very very clear examples of those who really really nailed it you know, and and uh, you know that I would say, yeah, you know, I would have no problem going back, uh, doing business with them, uh, and and others like the Shiloh Inn, you know, in Seaside, where I would say, you know what, it, it you know it was okay. They ended up, you know, ended up with with a pretty nice room with a pretty pretty nice view. But you know what, they just didn't care. They just didn't care. So avoid the Seaside. All right. So that's the big lesson for this week. After 14 days on the road, can't believe that that's what I walked away with, but I did. Thanks again for watching. This is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's dad and marketing gunslinger. And I'll see you again next week. Always, always remember to be uncopyable. See ya.